why we're here, right? To declare together what Jesus has done and who he is, amen? Well, man, we are so excited that you are here and so thankful that you've decided to come and worship with us the week of Christmas. Anybody ready for Christmas this week? Y'all ready? That's a much louder response than I thought we would get. Christmas is crazy. Well, we're so glad that you're here. And man, I know that sometimes for a lot of us, Christmas can be so much. There can be so many different things going on. I know that sometimes even in my own life, when it comes to Christmas, there's just all kinds of crazy stuff that's happening. But I wanna encourage you right now, right now in this season, to lay down all the different things that are going on. Even just getting here this morning at the first service at 9.30 a.m., you're here. And there's so many different things that could be going on, but you're here to worship the Lord, amen? And we would invite you right now, let's have a moment. Let's come and let's adore King Jesus together, amen? Y'all ready to worship? Let's worship together. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you. We lay it all down. We focus our hearts, we focus our minds on you, Jesus.
amazing, Jesus. There's nobody like you. You're the reason for this season, Jesus. Everything we do is all about you, God. And we decide right now. Give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise, Jesus. Come on, church, tell him. this morning. Hallelujah. I'd for you to just fixate on his face today. Can we do that? We turn our eyes to him. We gaze upon your face, Lord.
that it's all about Jesus. It's all about the King of Kings and what he's done. No matter what's going on in our lives, no matter the different things that we face, it's always, always only about King Jesus. And it's because of what he's done. Not just his birth, but the fact that he came. The fact that he died and the grave could not hold him. Death could not hold our Jesus down. He rose up from the grave and he holds all power in his hands. And that's why we celebrate this morning. And we would invite you right now to share in a time of communion. And let's remember what Jesus has done together. Let's share together.
The fourth and last purple candle represents peace. We will now light the angel candle. Luke 2, 13 to 14. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the, appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we come before you and we thank you for being a God of peace. We thank you for teaching us how to be peacemakers with others. God, we just pray that we'd be able to live the same way you did and use us in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, Generations Christian Church. How are we this morning? Oh, it's so good to see you. Those of you who have wondered the last few weeks if the Advent moment were real people on stage or a video, you have now seen that I have followed myself. It's the first time it's ever happened, but it's a video. So hopefully, now that you're behind the magic of the moment, it is still powerful. Welcome. My name is Jason Rates. I have the blessing and privilege of being one of the pastors here on staff. And I want to welcome you into the fact that it's Christmas week. Did anybody wake up today and went, it's, it's Christmas week? Like, this is why I'm excited Five Below exists, because I go and get all my Christmas shopping, and my kids and my wife just love gifts from Five Below. That makes me the dad of the year. Well, hey, I have a few things for you. I have an announcement to make, I have an invitation, and I have uh, a moment to remind you of. The announcement is this. Next Sunday looks a little different for us. We will only be gathering online. So there will be no physical church because this is one of those Sundays where we want to be the church and join together as families. So make sure you gather at any moment during the day. But our services will be live at 930 and 11. And so let's be the church and gather online. Also, I have a great opportunity for you. This week, we have a tremendous uh, amount of Christmas Eve Eve and Christmas Eve services. And so we want to make sure that you know about those. On uh, Christmas Eve Eve, they're at 5 and 7. And at Christmas Eve is 1 and 3 and 5 and 7 and 11. And these are tremendous opportunities to invite our friends and family who do not know Jesus. Because upwards to 80% of people will will accept an invite to Christmas. And this is a tremendous opportunity for us to invite our neighbors and our friends and our family who do not know Jesus so they can be connected to Jesus. And lastly, I want to invite you to continue in our worship service when we have this moment of offering. And it's only because there are so many faithful people who tithe and give financially to God through this local church that we're able to offer opportunities like this tremendous Christmas Eve Eve and Christmas Eve moment this week where thousands of people will hear about the gospel of Jesus. And that happens because of our faithful giving. So you can give a few ways. You can give by texting 84321. You can do that right now on your phone. You can give by giving in the offering boxes or you can give like my family does. We have it all set up on the Church Center app where the days that we get paid, we have a moment where we worship God together and we thank him for providing for us and we return our tithe to him and thank him. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your obedience. Thank you for your faithfulness and giving. Can we just pray and thank God and ask him to use this offering? God, we come before you and we thank you for this tremendous morning. God, we thank you for what you're gonna do this week. Right now, God, you're laying on our hearts people who we're going to invite to these Christmas services. God, we pray for our neighbors. We pray for the people that come in, we come into contact with. We pray for our families, family members who don't know you. And God, we just pray that you give us favor with them as we invite them to Christmas at Generations. God, would you please bless this offering? God, would you please use it to reach people who don't know you? God, would you please use it to reach kids and students so they can be connected to Jesus. God, we thank you and we praise you in your precious name. Amen.
Today's uh, installment of At the Movies, we were looking at the, the Polar Express, such an incredible movie. It reminds, my, reminds me of when our kids were young, and you know, one minute you are having hot chocolate on a magic train. That's what's happening in this movie, because the whole movie is about the power of believing and trying to get kids, young kids, to believe in the real St. Nick, and the, the train is going to the, the, the polar cap, it's going to the North Pole, and there's a, young, there's a young kid in this movie who's struggling with his ability to believe, and it's so, it's so good for us, I think, to have this film. I think there's some, some things in this film that really teach and have some things to say in our lives, because all of God's Word is about believing. Belief matters in our faith. John writes his epistles for one reason. He's like, I want you to be sure. First, second, and third John, if you're struggling with belief and faith, first, second, and third John towards the end of the New Testament, it's all about assuring us and having a strong faith. We're called believers. James calls Christians, those who follow Jesus and have confessed Jesus, he calls them believers. It's one of the names of early Christians. If, are you a believer? Believing matters. They call one another fellow believers. Matter of fact, when we baptize people into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask people before we do that if they believe. If they don't believe, we're just swimming in an awkward hot tub in front of a thousand people, right? There's nothing about it if you don't believe. Belief matters. And I, there, there are a few kind of moments that you can peek into the times and historical account of Jesus as he physically walked this earth that to me are just, uh, I, I gravitate towards them. See, there's another young man, much like the young man in the Polar Express that's trying to believe, and his name is Thomas. One minute, like, you know, we're, we're eating hot chocolate on a magic, magic train, right? Thomas is experiencing the roller coaster life of Christ. The miracles, Jesus claiming to be something that seemed impossible, yet, but yet having proof in his life that maybe it could be possible. And then Jesus is captured, beaten, and killed. I know it's a little awkward on Christmas week to talk about that. It's like, no, don't go there. Let's talk about baby Jesus. Well, we have hindsight. This is how the story is in the middle. John chapter 20, verse 24, picks up in this moment in Thomas's life. It says this, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side. Thomas has a list, okay? Unless these things happen, Thomas says this, I will not believe. I, I would say this, um, if, if you're here today and in a moment of honesty, you're, you're, you say, I, I don't know if I really believe. I struggle believing. You're in really good company. Okay, because you, you, you were kind of walking with a guy named Thomas who had a, a moment of honesty too where he said at one point in his life after seeing Jesus do all of the miracles, after seeing Jesus uh, I mean, killed, after seeing the claims that Jesus made and the authority that Jesus spoke, Thomas watched Jesus drive demons out of people. Thomas watched Jesus stand up to the aristocracy of the Jewish ruling class and with boldness tell them, I am the Son of God. I mean, Thomas had a front row seat to an incredible, spectacular play of events. I would say this. Uh, we, we call people that... Um, do not believe. Some people would call them non-believers. We in our church, it's it's just one of our things. We we say they're not believers yet. Okay, we say you're not believers yet because it's here. Here's the deal. It's okay to be on a journey, but I would tell you today that this is your time. This could possibly be your time to begin to believe. But there are some reasons. There are some reasons that we all have that creep into our lives that cause us to doubt. Kind of like the young man in Polar Express who's got a, got a feeling that this Santa Claus thing is made up. 
check out this second clip. Let's roll this, guys, and you guys will get the picture here. All right, all right, Sarah. You've had enough water, okay? Now it's time to go upstairs and go to bed. Come on. faster than the speed of light to get to every house in one night. And to hold all the presents, his sleigh would have to be bigger than an ocean liner. Your brother said that to you. He was just kidding. He knows there's a Santa. He said he wasn't sure. He wasn't sure if Santa was for real. Santa's for real, all right. He's as real as Christmas itself. Yep, but he won't come until you're sound asleep. So, good night, sweetheart. Santa will be here before you know it. So go to sleep. He's got to be asleep by now. He used to stay awake all night waiting for Santa. I think those days are just about over. That would be sad if it were true. Yeah. End to the magic. Good night, sweetheart. See? He's out like a light. Even an express train wouldn't wake him up now. I still love this movie so much. I do. I do. Uh, there's a reason why this young, this young guy in this movie is struggling with believing in Santa, right? Uh, he sees the phony guys at the mall that all smell like beef and cheese, <laughs> right? And he, he gets, you know, mom and dad really bought that present for me, and that's not what I asked Santa for. There are reasons why this guy has an experience of disbelief. You know, there are four things, I think, that help our belief actually grow. Most people, if they say, do you want to have a stronger faith? Do you want something you can hold on to? Most people in survey would say, man, I, I, I want that. 
But there's a track that we can all follow that actually get this, gets us there. There are four things that will help our belief grow. And one thing very, that we all need urgently that belief will give you. Here's the first thing. Belief grows through seeing Jesus. Belief grows when we see Jesus. Go back to Thomas. Remember, Thomas just said, if, uh, he's got a tick list. If I don't get to touch his hands, see his feet, put my hands in his side, I'm not in. I'm not believing. I don't care what you guys saw. I need to see Jesus. Belief grows through seeing Jesus. Verse 26 says this. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. I circle things and underline things. In my Bible, you can do this on your app. Here's something I would, I would underline and circle. Though the doors were locked, circle it. Jesus came and stood among them. That line he comes and stands among them. Circle that. Then he said to them, peace be with you. Underline it, underline it, underline it. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting, Thomas, and believe. This, this moment is one of the most iconic moments in uh, the history of our Christian faith because we all get it. We've all been where this young man is and believing in the folly of St. Nick and where we are and sometimes in our faith is growing believers or those who are not yet believers saying, I need to see Jesus. See, belief gets strengthened through the presence of Jesus. You know what I find really interesting is Jesus never shows up in the room and says, hey, where's Doubting Thomas? This name, I mean, you talk about making a mistake and then for the next 2,000 years, people, and I thought my wife had a long memory, okay? <laughs> Come on. It's funnier than that. She's not going to be mad. Tomorrow's our 24th anniversary, actually. <laughs> 24 years. I mean, we've been calling this guy Doubting Thomas for 2,000 years. You know what? Jesus never shows up. Hey, Thomas, get out of the room. You're kicked out of the club. Give us the secret comb back, coin back. You can't wear that shirt. You can't wear that. You take the, take the this is your time t-shirt off, Thomas. It's not your time anymore, right? Didn't believe. These guys believed. Belief grows through seeing Jesus, and Jesus never condemns us. Jesus puts action in coming to where we are and not condemning us for where we're at on our belief journey. And Jesus will strengthen our belief through showing up. I believe that Jesus is willing in these, these days, these COVID days, these 2020 days of showing up in your life. And in the same way he shows up in, in Thomas's life. And Jesus, of all the all the parables and all the stories he ever tells, he only tells one story where he mentions the actual names of people. It's always some guy, but in a very real one, he quotes Abraham in paradise. And Jesus quoting Abraham is saying, people have Moses and they have the prophets. They need to listen. We have a direct contact with Jesus through God's word. Oswald Chambers says that faith is deliberate confidence and the character of God whose ways you may not understand at this time. Man, that's so good. See, we see Jesus through the word. We grow belief through seeing Jesus in God's word. And many of us, we want more belief, but what we need is some more presence of Jesus to help our belief grow. Here's another way that our belief grows. It not only grows through seeing Jesus in the word, but belief grows through pain. And this is one like, man, I wish Johnny, it seems like you, you bring this up a lot in your messages. I wish you had some different points. I, I, I really only have the ones that he gives me. I'm a messenger of the king. I'm going to tell you what the king says. He speaks to us in James chapter 1, and he says this about how our belief grows. He says, consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials, pain of many kinds. Not just one kind, he's, he elaborates, of all kinds. All kinds of problems, consider it joy. Because, verse 3, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be 
mature and complete, not lacking anything. You talk about believing, you want to have more belief, want to grow belief, the very pain that some of us are fighting against and saying, I don't choose this pain, I don't want this pain, I don't like this pain, I deny this pain, I'm going to act like this pain doesn't exist, is the very thing that God says, I'm giving you this pain so that you can grow in belief. See, Tom Hanks in this movie, I love, besides the fact that the mom and dad, when they come in the room, the CGI was a little creepy, right? Did you notice that? I was like, mom is scary looking. And that technology has gotten a lot better. But Tom Hanks is like, he's the dad in the movie. He's the, he's the kind of the creepy guy who's the hobo on top of the train, right? He's the conductor. Uh, spoiler alert, he turns out to be sad. And I love that that happens because he's taking this kid on this adventure. There's, there's other kids on the train that just need some serious love in Jesus, Right? And there's some, there's some precious kids on the train that need some community. And he's taking them through all of these adventures to a place. And that's exactly what God is doing in our lives with pain. He is taking us on a journey. But I'm going to tell you this. There's a destination in our pain journey. And that destination is belief. Oswald Chambers goes on to say this about believing, faith. Believing is Believing never knows where it is being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. And some of you need to write that down. You're not a note-taking person. You've got to get your phone out. I'm going to say that again. This is incredible. Faith is, believing is, believing never knows where it is being led, but it loves and knows the one who is leading. See, the destination of your current pain is this, more belief. More belief is the destination. Belief grows through seeing Jesus. Belief grows through pain. And here, here we go. Man, I, I love this one because this is what we are commanded to talk about when we come together. This is the heart of all of it. Belief grows through repentance. Belief grows through us coming to God and saying, I need you. I'm broken. Look at the stuff in my life. And all of us, we want belief without doing some of these things. We want belief without pain. We want belief without really having to get into God's word and experience God and open our lives to God. And we want belief for sure without saying, I'm wrong and I need somebody. 1 John 1, 19 says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Man, there's this transaction that is so beautiful that happens. If we confess our sins, he forgives us and cleanses us from everything that we need clean from. And anyone need clean from anything today? Anyone need clean from something on the way to church today? Okay? Luke 15, 10 says this, Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. And I, as I read through God's word and just try to step back and look at all of it, you know one of the things I'm, I'm finding to be more and more true in my life? God runs the farthest. God has this unique love for people who are farthest from him. It's just one of the attributes. And some of us walk in the church and we think that church is for people that don't need God. Or churches for people that have got it figured out. Or churches for people who are righteous and holy. Can I tell you what God designed church for? God designed church as a vehicle that doesn't stay in one place that clean people come to. But as a vehicle that goes and finds people who feel like they have no hope. That's what we get to be. On the move. God is intently aware and pursuing those who are farthest off. Just think about that verse for a minute. The angels are at the gates of heaven right now, and they're like, someone is almost ready to repent. And when that happens, Jerry, you know, you start the click track, and we're going to get this band started, right? I mean, they got a song that they're ready to sing, a dance that heaven is ready to do when someone who is far off from God repents. It doesn't say anything about here, someone who doesn't need God just being in church. This is who God is. Belief grows through repentance. Here's the last one. Belief grows through obedience. I don't like this one. I just don't. I just don't. I mean, I, I think it's part of our culture. We're just, you know, we're independent. 
You know, as, as Americans, there's something about the individualism, individualistic nature of who we are that, you know, I was born on John Cougar Mellencamp. I fought authority, right? And authority, right? Always, right? But that's in us. And God's word is just saying the opposite. If I want more belief, if I want more faith, if I want something I can wrap my arms around that's not going to fail me, belief grows through obedience, I think we've lied to ourselves saying that we want to believe more while totally disregarding God's directions in our life. And we say with our mouth, I want to believe more, but our actions lead us to do the polar opposite of what God's called us to do. James writes, he continues, this is the James that says, you need pain, pain's good, pain leads to more belief. He says this in verse 22 of chapter 1, do not merely listen to the word, And deceive yourselves, but do what it says. See, we can't confuse knowing what God expects with obeying what God expects. And some of us have a lot of knowledge and information about what God wants from us, but we've got very little do it. And what's happening is belief is deteriorating in our lives, and it's not growing because obedience leads to Deeper, greater, richer, more full belief. It's like Oswald Chambers. If you don't know who he is, buy one of his books. He's rocking it today. He goes on to say, faith is deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. Did you get that? Deliberate confidence in the character of God. God's word is the truth serum that we all need. There's this incredible moment of belief that happens in Thomas's life, but also in the Polar Express at the very end. You've got to grab this moment. It's going gonna, it's gonna to key us into what the last verse we're going to read. Check this out. You know, in the movie, they never tell us his name. They never, they never tell us the name of this little guy. I, I think that's so incredible because truly, in the movie, we were all him, right? You put your name there. And if, if you don't get it, when, when he rings the bell, if, if he can't hear it jingle, the jingle bells, then it's proof in his life that he doesn't believe. And he wants so bad to believe. And he, he has that moment where he finally says, he just declares it. In the movie, they're magic words that get him across the finish line. Just him saying it is like, now he says it and he's got the feeling and all this stuff and he can hear it and it's like, oh. And everything stops because he says those words. Can I, can I tell you that these are the words that Jesus is commanding from us and not from an authoritarian way, but it's an urgent plea. Jesus stands and says, hey, here's what you gotta do. You gotta believe. I mean, just track with Thomas. It's crazy how it lays right over this movie. Thomas says, I don't care if you guys have seen him. I've got my checklist. i got to touch him and feel it and see it. i got to inspect it. And then Jesus shows up and he's like, all right, Thomas, let's go. Feel my feet, feel my hands, feel my side. Thomas, stop it. Obey, believe. It's It's crazy how we can have these moments of growth where we go from And this is what happens in people's lives. You can go from zero belief 
to 100% belief like that. It's, it's not like, well, I got to be on a long journey. That's not how it happens in the New Testament. People see Jesus, decide to obey Jesus. They experience Jesus' presence. They repent and they immediately go to believing. Thomas says this in verse 28. Here's his response to Jesus. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Okay, see what Thomas wasn't believing in was the resurrection of Jesus. That's what Thomas said, I don't believe. Everyone comes to Thomas. Jesus rose from the dead. Thomas says, I don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus shows up and proves the resurrection and says, Thomas, believe. Do you understand that what Thomas is saying here is not, I believe you rose from the dead. The declaration that Thomas makes in verse 28 isn't, I, okay, you got me. I believe that you are now alive and defeated the grave. That's not the declaration. The declaration he makes is, I believe that you are the son of God and you're the Lord of my life. That is a step further. Because some of us, perhaps, maybe at home online, you believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead, but your actions and your life and your surrender moment hasn't proven that he is in fact your Lord. And there's a step there. We make him Lord, we sing to him, we serve him, we give to him, but we haven't had a Thomas moment. God works in breakthrough moments. See, belief, I told you there were some things that belief grows. Belief grows through seeing Jesus. Belief grows through pain. Belief grows through obedience. Belief grows through repentance. But belief gives something. Can I tell you what belief gives? Belief leads to salvation. Belief leads to salvation salvation. And for some of us, this is your time. Jesus goes on to say, right after Thomas's confession of Jesus is his Lord, he says in verse 29, Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and have yet believed. See, there's one of these things right now that you probably need to zone in on. Maybe it's you, you need to just see Jesus more. Your faith needs to grow because you need to really see Jesus for who he is. And the truth is, is you've not been seeing Jesus. You've been seeing a whole lot of stuff on Netflix maybe, or you're caught up, right? But you've not seen Jesus. Some of you, you're denying the pain that you need to lean into because your belief is gonna grow through that pain. Some of you have not been obedient. There's something in your life maybe, you're at home and you're like, that's it for me. My belief has hit a wall. I'm struggling in my belief. My belief has deteriorated because I've not been obedient. And some of us, I tell you, you want to know what the nitro is. You know, you hit that. There, there's a nitro. You repent. You repent. It's, it's a belief nitro. Okay, it's like zoom. Here's what's great about God's word. You get an encounter. You get your own encounter. Just like they didn't name the little kid in the movie. It's you. And forget Thomas for a minute. Can, can I just walk you through this? See, there was a time maybe in your youth that you used to believe more. But you've had some struggles. And in a moment of intellectual honesty, just you and yourself, not telling anyone around you right now, you know that you've got a deteriorating belief in faith. You've lost some childlike faith. Can I just walk you through Thomas's experience and you live it? See, for some of you, it's been longer than a week that you've lived like. For Thomas, it was one week. Verse 26, it was one week. For some of you, it's been longer than a week and you're afraid because of that time span that too much time has gone by. Stop it, that's a lie from the enemy. This is your time. The doors were locked, verse 26. Some of you, you're in a place where you, you are behind locked doors and you think Jesus can't get in. You have locked doors in your life so you don't have to have an encounter with him. And you think that those locked doors are gonna stop Jesus from coming into your life right now? This is your time. I'm sorry, but he's coming. He is a pursuing God. I'm too far off. That's his specialty. Verse 26, Jesus comes and he stands in front of you. 
He just comes through those locked doors and stands among them. He came at Christmas time as a baby, but he comes now in power and in spirit. And I tell you what, get this. We're just walking through the text. You need to be underlining it. You need to write it on your heart. The very first words that Jesus has for you right now in this very moment is this. Peace be with you. The words he had for Thomas are the words he's got for you. Peace be with you. Not, I can't believe we're here again. I can't believe you did this again. I can't believe you brought me back to this moment. I can't believe I gotta forgive you again. I can't believe you're doubting. No, here are the words that Jesus, the Son of God, has for you. And it's not baby Jesus. It's powerful Lion of Judah, all in power, Jesus. He's saying this to you through his spirit. Peace be with you. Those are the first words that come off of his lips in your life right now. Peace be with you. think he's saying to you over these next few days do you see the pain that I'm willing to walk through to get to you I'm willing to walk through junior high you think junior high was easier on Jesus than you it wasn't it's hard on everybody ask a junior high kid they don't even know how to tell you and here's what Jesus says to you first thing peace be with you second thing it must be serious, right? <laughs> he says, stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe. And it's not by, well, I just got to bike that little kid. I got to jingle the thing and I got to, no, 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 no. Spend time with him. Lean into the pain and say, what are you teaching me? Start by being obedient to some things. Repent of sin and experience salvation. And you know, and all of that is wrapped up in what Thomas's answer is. It's what our answer needs to be. The very, that, that very verse, verse 28, my Lord and my God. Some of us, um, we know what it's like to have a broken down car. Right, we know what that's like. See, if your car's broke, like maybe perhaps parts of your life, like maybe your belief, maybe your faith, you would take it to a mechanic. It's not going to fix itself in the driveway. You take it to a mechanic. At some point for the mechanic to fix your car, you would eventually have to give them the keys. Okay? You, you would have to give them the keys. Here's what you can't do. You can't drive by and your clunky car that's broken, making all the noises, and honk and be like, this guy's the greatest mechanic. He's awesome. He rocks. He will fix your car. You can't do that. That's not going to fix it. Just driving by and praising him. Okay? Can't sing songs about the mechanic. What a mighty mechanic we serve. It's not going to work. That's an old one. I literally just pulled that one off the top of my head. See, it's the action of handing him the keys that is trust, it's belief in the mechanic. We have the best car mechanic. It's a metaphor, everybody. All right? It's Jesus. You have to have a moment where you're willing to say, my Lord and my God, and you hand him your life. Lord Jesus, there are, there are those sitting at home right now on a couch and they're dreading the next five days of Christmas. They want it to be over because they don't want to think about you and they don't want to see, they don't want to see it because they, they struggle in their belief and they're angry, but you can take them from zero belief to full on repentance and salvation if they'll just hand you the keys. There are some in this room that if we take an honest look at where we're at, we are not believers yet because we haven't repented and we've not, we've not confessed you. And we've not said what this little kid said in the movie. I just believe. Father God, would you work through your spirit to show us who you are. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. And have a great and stressless four days. Y'all, we love you. God bless.